Hi guys, it's Christine from Tamar's Hope. I hope that you are all doing well. And if you are new, welcome to my channel. My name is Christine. I am the founder of Tamar's Hope. And Tamar's Hope is a ministry, a Christian ministry that seeks to restore the lives of women caught in bondage to human trafficking and sex slavery and sexual abuse in the New York, New Jersey metro region. And I am a survivor of abduction and sexual abuse and exploitation myself. So once again, if you're new, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please don't forget to follow us on all of our social media outlets. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And so today I wanted to come on and I wanted to talk about the, the phrase, trust the process. So a lot of times we hear this phrase, trust the process, whether it's in recovery or whether it's in some sort of, you know, situation that we're going through in life and we can hear um, people say to us just trust the process or just trust me and I wanted to come on and I wanted to talk about that a little bit because that's something that actually has been uh, said very recently um, within just the social media outlets and um, with certain topics that I, I myself have even been covering and, and talking about. And I feel like it's important, it's an important subject because, and topic matter to discuss because I think a lot of the times that um, phrase is mis misunderstood and especially with um, the dynamics in within a sexual abuse survivor and a perpetrator relationship and you know one of the things that I wanted to say is when you know in my other videos I've talked about it as well is you know when you tell somebody to trust the process um, it really just especially for abuse survivor, it just really pangs them and rubs them the wrong way in the sense that with all of the things that have been coming out now with the Epstein list and all of the other uh, topics that have been coming out with the sexual abuse and allegations within and without of the church and, um, you know, just within the past several months, and you know we've we've heard this phrase and specifically with um you know mike bickle from the international house of prayer in kansas city um you know once those allegations came to the forefront you know everybody was just saying well trust the process trust the process you know give it due process and you know we have to wait and see what happens and um now that we're here on the other side, you know, we really see that, um, you know, how everything has unfolded and the people that were saying the trust the process and wait and not to say anything really are nowhere to be found. Literally. I mean, Dr. Micah Brown, you know, he was one person that was coming out, um, and just saying, you know, for the people who were the advocates, um, not to say anything and you know if you were saying anything about it and you had an opinion then you were doing the work of the devil and we can really see now the damaging effects of people that even will weaponize the scripture and the Bible to really um, manipulate and to control the narrative of what's going on and when you say those those words, just trust the process, and you don't give people an outlet to be able to, you know, 
share their thoughts or share their, even their experiences, you know, you really are, um, in a sense, you are attempting to stifle their voice and to silence their voice. And um, so I just wanted to come on here and talk about it because I think it's interesting now that, um, you know, we are on the other side of this. We, we can really see, you know, what has transpired and with um, just that situation in itself, you know, with uh, I have completely severing formally and 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 permanently separating themselves from from that situation with Mike Bickle and um, just totally ousting him and then we saw uh, you know the resignation with Stuart Greaves and um, and and now with David Slyker and you know um, I gotta tell you this is something that you know we will not be silent about you know, the, the, uh, the sexual abuse survivors and victims and the advocates will not be bullied into silence. And, you know, the, it's unfortunate that the people who are using scripture and to weaponize and using even God to weaponize, you know, and to manipulate and to silence the voice of those, you know, who have no voice and cannot speak for themselves you know, um, it, it really is, you know, just the, the dynamics of how this whole thing plays out is, is, is really just very common. And especially for the people who defend the perpetrator and they think that they're, they're helping the situation and they're really making it worse because they're really enabling a perpetrator in 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 their sin and not just sin but even their crimes you know to continue to um be used in that way and being a master manipulator and abusing uh, the pe the flock i mean and the people in the church and so there's been a lot of things that come have come out more so over the holidays that have just caused a lot of exposure and a lot of light to be shed on this situation. And I wanted to come on and talk about that because, you know, I'm just like, you know, baffled at the fact that nobody that had come out and was just really defending Mike Bickle, who we now know is a perpetrator and has done possibly heinous crimes against multiple, multiple of women and how there was such a cover up, you know, going on. And now everybody has jumped ship and is, are no longer to be found. And, you know, I, there's a lot of emotions that come up for me as a survivor. Uh, there's a lot of anger. Um, there's even fear there, you know, at what, um, what cost and what length that people will go to to believe their own self-delusion even of putting man on a pedestal and basically worshiping a man even before God and you know defending him even to the point of you know enabling and being in in a way directly or indirectly an accomplice to the sin that he is perpetrating and like I said possibly even the crimes so um and you know I really want to say this also I think that you know people like Michael Brown and Stephen Strang I think they really should do a public apology and apologize for defending of what we now know on the other side know this man to be a perpetrator that has um, really gone after uh, vulnerable and young women and have sexually uh, abused them in these these kind of ways and you know um, especially as a leader in the church he is held to a higher standard and and a level of accountability and um, it just you know it really is cowardice to you know, hide in the shadows right now and uh, with
with everything that is really ex be, had that has already been exposed um i i believe that this is really god and that he's not going to allow this to continue and that this really is a year of exposure and but um you know and i also share not only in my experience as a survivor i not only share in those areas i also share in the area of you know uh, being a professional in the field of mental health and behavioral health in the field of sh social work i share from my experience and training in in that way as well and i actually wanted to read something and this is from a book that i just started reading now from dr henry cloud and he is a licensed clinical social worker um uh, i'm sorry li li licensed clinical psychologist and i i love henry cloud and he just came out with a new book called trust and one of the things that he mentions in his introduction is um, and this is basically the topic of this video is just trust the process or what he what he says here in the introduction of his new book is called he says just trust me quote unquote we've all heard these three words and we've probably spoken them some people speak them fully expecting others to immediately say of course I'll trust you this will be great Perhaps we have said them and meant well, but without understanding how much we were truly asking of another person or even not knowing exactly how to make good on the commitments that their trust would require of us. Perhaps we've let them down unintentionally because we didn't understand how much we were asking them to risk with the brief statement, quote unquote, just trust me. I think, quote unquote, just trust me should come with sirens, flashlights, and other warning signs. These words often fall short. They can disappoint sometimes terribly. Neuroscience tells us there's a good reason we should not, quote unquote, just trust someone. I'll explain this in greater detail in this book, but suffice it here to say that the entire human nervous system and brain are wired to scan our environment and quickly assess each person with whom we interact. We are designed to ask one crucial question before any other, is it safe? When someone invites us to trust, we want to know before anything else if we will get hurt and will work hard to avoid the pain. The answer to this question, quote unquote, is it safe, begins in milliseconds, but it can determine the future of a personal relationship, a family, a business deal, or an entire company. Why? When we trust, we move toward a person, a group, a deal, a company, or whatever the object of our trust may be and invest our hearts, time, energy, love, or wallets. When we don't trust, we get a strong internal message in the opposite direction. Move away. Every day, in a thousand ways, with every personal and business encounter, we decide either to move toward or move away. In your personal life, everything rise, rises and falls on trust. Trust yields intimacy. You could probably write your own book about the benefits of being in a relationship with a truly trustworthy person as well as the devastating devastation of realizing that you couldn't really trust someone. Likewise, in business, trust is everything because trust fuels investment. Whether you're dealing with a marriage partner, a friend, your team at work, your customers, your partner, or your employees, you want them to invest their hearts, mind, energy, and resources with you. And I'll include church in that as well. 
For them to make that investment and make it freely, you must deliver trust, not just once, but over and over. Yet I think everyone has risked trusting someone in the past and wish they hadn't. So that was just the beginning of the introduction to Dr. Henry Cloud's uh, new book uh, called Trust, who is a clinical um, license, a clinical psycho Christian clinical psychologist. And so I just wanted to come on here and talk about, you know, when we talk about trust the process or when somebody says, just trust me. And as it says here, you know, the research even speaks for itself. You know, when it says we are intrinsically wired in, in just nature and the way that God has made us to, you know, scan our environments out and to see if it's safe. And one of the main, the most critical important thing in any dynamic, whether it's in relationship or business or in the church is trust. But when you just come out, especially in, in these areas, con you know, concerning sexual abuse or um, in the church and other areas of, of life, when you just say, just trust me, and you expect people to do it without even having a thought or opinion of their own, it really is either uninformed or um, just, just ignorance because um, people are just naturally wired to want to know the truth and want to shed the light on a situation and so I definitely have learned a lot with this um, you know these new new information and these new things that have come out you know regarding trust and trusting the process not only in my own experience and in the work that I do but just in the things that I've seen and and the things that I've I've, I've noticed in um, with everything that's come out now with all of the sexual allegations with people in the church, you know, with the, these leaders, the Catholic church and the Christian church. And now, you know, the Epstein things are, uh, list is going to get, um, uh, exposed and there's going to be more light shed on that. And I really believe that it's going to be a very interesting year and there's going to be a lot of spins on a lot of different things with these concerning these topics, especially sexual abuse and in the church. And even with this being, you know, human trafficking, uh, National Human Trafficking Awareness Month, I believe it's so important at this time to really shed light and to talk about these things. And, you know, one of the first things that I even mentioned, you know, when all of this stuff came out was... Um, the biggest red flags for me is when